the most valuable asset to a business most of the time is your customer base. So let me ask again, how many of you right now have a customer database? How many of you use that database to communicate with your customers at least once a month? How about once every two weeks? All right, that's, that's good, pretty good. So to answer the question, the relationship between a business owner and that business's customers is typically the most valuable asset that can be leveraged, right? This is basically your golden goose. So unless you screw up the relationship, you can go back to your customers over and over again to sell them different products and services. And we'll get into that a bit later. But the relationship between a business owner and their customer is almost always the business's most valuable asset. So think about how many business owners don't actually keep track of their customers or they do have some type of CRM system or database, but they never use it to contact their customers. So essentially, it's as if they have no customer list at all. Does that, and does that make any sense? So, so think about that. So the question really comes down to, if endorsement partnerships are so powerful, why then are fewer than 1% of all business owners using this powerful marketing strategy? Why less than 1%? Why don't more businesses, even though the potential to create endorsement partnerships is everywhere, as you're going to see, why don't we think of using them more often? Anyone, any ideas? You can put it in the chat box there or, or shout out. So, yeah, that's good reasons. Trust had a bad experience once, maybe got screwed by their partner and don't want to do it again. Yeah, uh, Sal says, don't know how to create or pitch partnership proposals. That's good. Could be one of the reasons. Uh, Jenny says, don't know how to find people who want to partner up. Well, that's probably one of the biggest ones, and that's one of the things we'll cover here before the day is over. Uh, and Bill, perhaps they believe they can see it all by themselves. Yeah, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs will think that they can do everything themselves. You know, I'm, I'm my own boss, and I can figure this all out by myself. I don't need any help. These, these are all possibly good reasons why people don't pursue strategic endorsement partnerships more often. And we'll, we'll learn more about that in a minute. So again, why don't more business owners use this powerful marketing strategy? Well, usually it's because when they think of strategic alliances, joint ventures, endorsement partnerships, whatever you want to call them, most people might think in terms of, well, it's, it's going to be really complex. Like my lawyer has to talk to your lawyer and we need to be locked in a room and create these MOUs and these 30 page contracts to, you have to negotiate. And then there's a lot of back and forth and somehow it's just so very complicated because again, you know, big companies do strategic alliances all the time, but for small business owners, sometimes they have this image of strategic partnership agreements that they're too intimidating or they're too hard or they, they just don't know how to go about it. But in reality, it's not like, uh, it's, in reality, it's not like that at all. So here's my experience. My experience is the reality of endorsement partnerships is really very simple and pretty much comes down to asking a potential partner, hey man, want to do a deal? Want to do a deal? That, that's about all there is to it. No lawyers, no long drawn out negotiations, no committee meetings, no going into business with the other party. In fact, with me, want to do a deal, you know, it's really very simple. And they either say yes or they say no. It's it's really very simple. Most of the deals I've done, uh, sometimes we draw up a contract, but I wouldn't even call it a contract. They're really just simple agreements. So sometimes it can be done through a simple email where you say, hey, man, I'll do this if you do that, or I'll provide this if you provide that. And sometimes it's just a simple handshake. And guess what? If the other party is going to give you all this bullshit over, you know, a detailed contract, then if they're saying things like, let me talk with my lawyer, give me a 30, 50 or 100 page contract. Well, I'm telling you, you don't want to do a deal with that other business. They're going to be a pain in the butt. You haven't even done a deal yet and they're already making things this difficult. Who cares? Go find another guy to do a deal with. Really. I found the most profitable deals I've done are so simple. It could be one meeting or it could be one email. It's, it's really all just based on trust. And, and that's what we're going to talk about a little more. 